internet, it's Ali here and uh, today we are going to be looking at this cabin. Um, not so much as in how I built it but kind of it's a step by step. I never did a tutorial as I was doing it but uh, just took pictures along the way so hopefully it can give you some ideas if you're looking to to make something like this. Um, for whatever reason you've decided you needed some extra space, whether you need it for a home office gaming area. I'm going to shoot with the castigators into this unit. I'm you know, uh, entertainment. <laughs> Drinks area. Yeah. Hopefully you make it. Sure <laughs> yeah. Whatever you want to call it, man cave. I don't like that term. I don't like that term. Cave kind of uh, encourages a uh, cold, dark, dank thoughts to come in so um this my friend is the home of my cousin Bali and they call it a mine a mine yeah I just call it the cabin or the bar um but yeah there's a few things that you're going to need to to do before you go ahead depending on where you are one is are you going to need planning permission um but before you even get to that stage is where are you going to put it um so yeah you know do you have somewhere to put it uh and you kind of need the best thing oh sorry ali from 30 minutes into the future um the most important thing you can do is get your other half's permission okay that is the most important thing you can do uh if you have another half because you will spend a lot of time um, doing this project, so it's it's important that they understand and uh, that you understand you're not going to be around for a lot of it, okay? But uh, the rewards um, will speak for themselves once you're done. Okay, back to the video. Uh, that you can do early on is pay, or if you're good at this, you don't need to pay, but if I uh, get a really good solid foundation, um, the two most common types are going to be a wood one or a concrete one, depending on the size. Because of the size of this cabin, which is about just under 9 metres by 5 metres, so about 50 metres squared, we work with a concrete um, base. Uh, so it, it was just going to be perfectly flat. And I got um, some builders who had uh, some really good grounds workers in to, to lay that for me. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much all that we paid for. Um, so yeah, let's go crack on and see how we went on. Okay, as you can see, we've uh, the concrete base is now done um, and it looks nice and flat and my cat Mary has given it his seal of approval. If you look over in the um, left hand side, you can see two blue pipes coming out. Now they are water pipes. And uh, what I've done with those is I just ran them whilst the guys were pouring the concrete, uh, dug them under under the earth and then brought them out somewhere near my garage. So the idea is um, once the concrete is dark dry, I can then pass through some um, armoured electrical cable and um, data cabling to get the internet and uh, stuff into there, which will then patch into the main house system, which I've got a junction in the garage. So that's what those are for. Okay, so the big day is finally here. I've been waiting for this um, Arctic lorry all day. Uh, we had a uh, schedule from between eight in the morning till <laughs> 8 p.m. And uh, it was coming down from Cornwall uh, in the southwest of England and we're over in the southeast and we were the last drop off of the day. So it arrived late at night. It's super dark, but um, he pulled over on the side of the road and the whole truck was full of our wood <laughs> it's about three tons of wood on there um, and uh, he had to get it off using this uh, little forklift uh, truck which was incredible it kind of it went down the side of the house super narrow into the side gate and he managed to deposit it all in the dark without you know bumping or touching any of the uh, side fences um, down on the grass one thing you should probably uh, set yourself up for is whatever they put this stuff on, it's going to get ruined. So um, 
our grass did get ruined under there and we um, broke a couple of these concrete slabs actually under the weight of the the forklift truck and all the wood and um, shingle tiles and that's actually part of their T's and C's they um, they only do curb drop-offs or if you can convince them to put it onto your property um, they're not going to be held responsible for any damage um, but that's the, the lesser of two evils because yeah there's a lot of stuff to move if it was only curbside so then it was off for a uh, a good night's sleep because we were going to start early in the morning so what I ended up doing was bribing a, a few of my friends and my brother uh, to come over and help me with this uh, as kind of like a, a fun project to do and it was a really good experience um, they came over and the first thing we had to do was unpack all that wood that was dropped off from last night now it is like a massive ikea jigsaw thing where it is all numbered however it's not numbered and put together in numerical order when they pack it they pack it um, in terms of ease of um, of getting it onto the lorry and packing it in nice even shape so it's all over the place so basically we had to unpack all that wood um, and this is something that you need to be aware of you will need a space that's probably maybe two twice as large as uh, the space that you're building uh, to be able to spread out all this wood so you can see it all and find all the numbers um, but once we've done that uh, it was then just a case of putting down the waterproof membrane um, cutting that water pipe that we saw earlier so you know there was quite a lot of excess on that cutting that down and making sure not to nick any of the cables that we've now poked through it and then uh, it was setting up the first base rim and this thing just goes together um, like in a big square um, and the first bit that you do is at half length because that's all half height sorry and that's all the um, uh, the waterproof treated stuff so we had to find all of that um, and then after that it was pretty much the same numbers over and over again up until you get to the first window so once we found that first layer uh, the rest of it quickly came together um, until we hit the windows there was a bit of finagling to do with the windows but um, they pretty much slotted into place nice and comfortably um, and uh, we could carry on pretty much just um, whizzing round this this chassis, this wooden chassis really. Um, and we got quite a lot done in that one day. Um, you know, we were hoping to have the roof on that day, but unfortunately, <laughs> one of the final pieces on the final strut, like right at the top, uh, was milled back to front. So we couldn't fit it. Uh, and that was um, key for, for, for doing the roof. So we had to stop um kind of late evening or late afternoon early evening which was annoying but um uh, then we phoned two in and um got them to send us a new bit so annoyingly the next day <laughs> snow was forecast that we i still hadn't had this roof on because it was going to be a good few days um before two in could send me the replacement um timber so using the spare kind of packaging that came with the um, woods that kind of it came wrapped in we, uh, we fashioned this kind of makeshift roof um, to kind of protect you know um, the floor in the inside not that we kind of really needed to because um, the snow just kind of <laughs> came down and slammed through it maybe I kind of uh, overreacted a bit you know wanting to get the roof on before the weather turned um, but I ended up having to call my brother-in-law who um who lives just around the corner and he was kind of he was a great help because uh, my brother and and my other friends had um their prior arrangements so that was that was pretty much the last i would see them uh, apart from kurt um for for the rest of the build so i just needed an extra pair of hands to get the central purlin on which is massive it's really heavy and it's the highest one up it's about just under four meters up so um, couldn't do it on my own so we needed two sets of big ladders um, either side to get it on and then once that was on then I could crack on the next day um, putting the uh, the timber slats on which I could do myself and um, every so often uh, when there were free Nick or Kurt would kind of pop down for an hour or two and uh, help me bang some nails in but uh, yeah the slats then took 
<laughs> that took quite a while to do um, because you were just running up and down the ladders all the time, <laughs> um, um, you know, fitting them, nailing them in, running down, grabbing some more uh, that you could carry up the ladders and then, you know, lather, rinse and repeat. Needless to say, our bad luck uh, with the wood didn't uh, end there as we ran out of um, roofing boards in the end. So again, up goes the, uh, uh, the waterproof membrane and we had to order some more um, roofing boards uh, from Chewing. After that though, it was relatively straight sailing. Um, ended up putting insulation on the roof before we tiled it using the shingles that you get as part of the kit. So I had to build uh, this kind of uh, kind of frame around it to hold the um, Celotex or insulation board as it were. I've only used 50 mil here and if I was to do it again I'd probably use 100 mil and then ply over the top of it as well but um, instead when we put the or when I put the, or when I hammered the roofing um, shingles on I used extra long uh, nails to get through the 50 mil insulation into the roofing boards underneath. Um, it kind of proved a bit of a problem as you can see the roof is quite steep um, so there was no real way to kind of stand on there as you can see with all the instructional <laughs> two in videos so I had to make a crawl board um, out of the leftover pallets that were now empty so I could um, hang on onto those and um, apply the, uh, the shingles and again this was a super slow process as I'd get maybe a row of three done, then I'd have to go, go down the crawl board, onto the steps, move the steps over, move the crawl board over, take more shingles. And uh, yeah, it ended up um, taking quite a while to do the front and the back of this uh, ginormous roof. And uh, the reason why I ended up making a crawl board is um, because I fell off the <laughs> roof a couple of times. Luckily, um, I started off uh, on the back and uh, the hedge <laughs> caught my fall. But yes, uh, safety is important. Speaking of safety, the gable was a complete and utter git to put up. It was so heavy and so awkward. Um, so we ended up um, borrowing some scaffolding, or sorry, a tower, as you can see from, um, from my brother-in-law. And it still took maybe four or five of us to get it back up. Um, probably about half a morning it took but four or five of us to get that thing up and uh, I don't want to be repeating that again in a hurry. Once that was done, uh, the inside got the same insulation treatment. Again, 50 mil, um, whether or not I'd put 100 in, um, probably because it's going to take a lot more work because the actual timbers were 50 or 60 mil deep, so they fit nicely, um, but managed to you know, get the insulation in um, over the waterproof membrane. Uh, and there's my dear old mum who insisted on helping out, bless her. So um, with that, we kind of had a, a bit of fun putting all that together before the, um, the floorboards went down, which were very similar to, to the roof, all tongue and groove. And uh, I'd recommend getting a nail gun so um, you can just whip through it really quickly. I won't bore you with all the electrics. Um, I kind of cut out, as you can see, gaps to put in um, floor sockets and internet points and Wi-Fi and, and whatnot. Um, chuck some lighting in, uh, electric radiators. Quick tip, if you're gonna put electric radiators, run them on their own circuit um, because of the current draw, then you don't have to worry that they're gonna keep tripping in winter. So put them on their own breaker and you won't have any issues. And then depending on your, your choice of lighting, I kind of went with spotlights and wall lights. Spotlights in the office, wall lights in the in the bar area and then both areas got a chandelier in each room two in the bar and one in the office to keep continuity throughout the two rooms flooring wise we kind of get it kept it a bit um standard in the office just carpet tiles cheap and cheerful does does the job makes it look good and then we varnished the uh, floor in the bar area so it kind of had that nice wooden rustic appeal at this stage you're pretty much complete um, so it's down to you how you want to use the room but um, I wanted to kind of make it into a bar so I ended up fashioning a bar stud work out of these two by fours and um, I used the area that's why I ran all my electrics and data cables to and kind of used that as a nexus as a central hub to power the cabin 
Um, I also put in these um, air ducts so we could, if anyone wanted to, to smoke the odd cigar and stuff inside, we could. But um, ordered the beer fridge and then built the stud work around it using um, laminated MDF. So it already looks like it's a, a wood effect once you've popped um, all the sides, you know, so there's no work for you to do there. I then used the leftover MDF to, to make this makeshift table just to see how it would uh, look. And uh, yeah, it kind of now it looks and feels a bit like a bar. Um, but next thing I ended up doing was I bought this work surface from a kitchen company and had them um, professionally make it uh, and finish it off. And it was just a case of popping it on top of the um, framework that I'd made. I got inspiration for furniture from um, a couple of my local pubs. Uh, to kind of see what furniture they would have in there. So I ended up finding a catering furniture company online and just ordered similar stuff to get the same feel uh, for it. And no self-respecting pub would be without any beer taps. So I uh, managed to find a website that reconditions um, ale pumps from pubs that have gone out of business. And uh, I spoke to my local brewery and they were able to give me these adapters uh, that fit on the boxes of beer that you can buy so you can actually serve yourself a nice pint of draft ale when you're at home. After that it's just a case of adding whatever entertainment you want and as you may or may not know my main business is actually home automation so obviously I did have to build in a surround sound cinema into this cabin and uh, those familiar with the channel will also know I'm a big Warhammer fan so we fashioned some... we? I fashioned some um, gaming tables that are designed to go over the round pub tables, um, which I'll link in the description here uh, if you want to see how those are made. Well, we've reached the end of the video and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. It's been quite the journey for, for me. Um, I've really enjoyed building this cabin and using it uh, day to day, week in, week out, month in, month out. and. Uh, especially during a lockdown, depending when you're watching this, it's been a lifesaver, to be honest. Um, but if you've got any questions on, um, you know, what you've seen here or how you might do things, write it in the comments below. You know, ask away, I'll answer as many questions as I can. And you guys, um, all, all the viewers, you might get ideas from somebody else. So with that, I'll love you and leave you. Um, there's lots of weird and wonderful things you can customise to do your own um, you know your own knacks here but uh i'm gonna uh, sit down and uh, enjoy a film now so thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one catch you later for this.